Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD tutorial video for AutoCAD 2017. In this video we're going to be looking at how to create sections. So we're going to learn how to create section views. So what we're starting off with uh, in this video is we've got an isometric drawing here of an object, uh, some uh, piece of uh, tooling that might need manufacturing. Uh, and what we're going to look at is how to create uh, a section view through the middle of this so we can see what's going on inside it. So uh, I've already created an orthographic view of uh, this object so what I'm going to do is bring this down here so it's a little bit closer so we can see some of the fine detail on here so if we look at what's going on here you can see that uh, we've presented this drawing we've laid it out as third angle perspective so we've got the front view here uh, the end view the right hand side of it and the top view up here. So you can see there's some hidden detail on here. Uh, you can see where uh, this inset is on both sides. Uh, you can see the uh, circles here go all the way through uh, to act as tubes uh, and we've got all that detail on, on this view as well. So what we're going to look at now is well how do we create a section view of this? What is a section view for starters? Well a section view uh, is uh, a view of a cross section so it's as if we've uh, cut uh, through the object in a given direction in a given plane and looked at the cut face of it that's what we're looking at here so what we'll do is uh, we'll create a section view uh, along a line here now when you create a section view you need to have uh, a section line uh, or a cutting line so that you can see uh, exactly where the object has been cut uh, and where it's being viewed from. So to create a section line what I've done in my layer properties uh, I've created uh, a section line layer so I'll set that as my current because I'm about to draw on there. Uh, now again various different regulations and standards uh, suggest that this line uh, should be uh, actually the same as a center line. Uh, it should be the same as a center line so it would uh, be a dash and a dot uh, but again lots of different uh, organizations will have their own method uh, they'll have their own way of doing this um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a phantom line uh, which just to differentiate it really from from a center line so that you can clearly see what it is so uh, we've got phantom 2 so that's half scale for the phantom line uh, set as our section line so we'll use that here so what we're going to do is we're going to be on our section line. We're going to create a polyline. Uh, now it's quite important to use a polyline for this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of which is that it may be we want to include a change of direction in our section line, uh, or it may be, or when we're just doing a straight line, uh, we need to start it in a certain way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a section line going right the way through the centre of this here. So let's do that now. So I'm going to pick the midpoint here. Uh, and I'm going to select my start point out this side. Now what I want to do for starters is I want to change the start and end width of my polyline because we should have a thicker bar on the end of the polyline. So what I'm going to do is down here where it says width I'm going to select that. Uh, I'm going to change the width to 0.5 uh, and then it asks for the end width and that's also going to be 0.5 so that's just for this section so if I now draw this coming out here I'm going to put my ortho snap on so that I get a nice straight line and I'm going to make this uh, just about 10 mil long should be fine so there's uh, my first point now I'm going to uh, select width again but this time I'm just going to press W and space uh, and now set the P line to 0 and the end width to zero as well. And then I'm going to draw my section line coming across here to about there. And once again, select W. Starting width of this next section will be 0 0.5, and the end width of the next section will be 0 0.5 as well. So then we just draw this, and again, if we go 10 mil, then you can see that we've created a, a thicker bar on the end of our two. Uh, of our line here so you can see that we've, we've created that quite nice and neatly so that's good now what we need to do is think about well what uh, direction are we going to view this from it's like we're going to get a saw blade and cut along this line going through that way 
so it would be like cutting down through this object this way along a line running along there so what we're going to do is think well what position do we want to view this from now we've already got a drawing here so what we'll do is we can modify this drawing this front view to become our section view so we can have a look at that now so what we want to think about if this is third angle perspective uh, this view is like looking at this drawing from uh, down here going that way so we draw a couple of arrows to uh, show that so the easiest way to draw an arrow uh, that isn't a multi-leader in uh, in AutoCAD is to just type Q leader which is short for quick leader and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the midpoint of that first section of the line that I created and draw my arrow going this way uh, and we'll make it 25mm long and what you can see is we've created that arrow the head looks quite tiny so what we'll do is we'll just select that quick leader uh, PR for properties uh, and I'm going to change the arrow size to 4mm 4.5 zero and there's our arrow created there now technically this should probably be on the annotations layer rather than the section lines layer because if that line gets too long it'll start to uh, become uh, looking like the phantom line which could be quite confusing so we've moved that now onto the uh, the annotations layer so what we'll do now is instead of just creating a, a new leader we'll select that one copy it select that as our base point and then pop another one over there like that now what you should also do when you do this is put in uh, some text to indicate where this uh, view is going to be so if we uh, select text here uh, select a text box and we'll just pop it here for now but we'll, we'll move it in a minute so we want this to be view A so we'll put in a capital A and again that's quite small so we'll make that 4 mil, so it's a little bit bigger okay and what we'll do is we'll we'll just move this over a little bit so it ends up a little bit more central so if I move that by 1.5 and just drop it down a wee bit drop it down by a couple of mil there we go so that's there now and then what we'll do is just copy that using the bottom of that arrow as our base point and pop that there. So that is our uh, A, A view and then what we'll do is down here on this view we need to label this up as being A, A. So what we'll do is put in another text box, put that in here, again make it 4mm high and go uh, A dash A. So that tells us that that's our A, A view here. Obviously, when it comes to scaling uh, letters and stuff, we'll look at uh, that in a, a future video uh, for when we get to layouts. But for the time being, uh, that just identifies that this uh, drawing is the AA view, which is the view from here to here. So what do we need to do to change this into a section view? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All you've got to think about when you create a section view is imagine that you've got a hacksaw blade and you start cutting along this line in this direction. Any piece of metal that you cut through with your hacksaw blade becomes uh, a hatched area on the section view with uh, a notable exception that we'll get to in a moment. So if we look at this area first of all, look at this, this part of the drawing here. What we've got here is uh, this section here and as you can see because this is symmetrical from this side to this side there's a big block of metal in the middle of this or some material so what we're going to do is we're going to take this area and we will end up hatching this whole thing but because if we cut along that line you can see that these uh, hidden detail lines will be done away with they'll be gone because they won't be visible if we cut along there and remove this section down here so that we're looking at it from that way we're looking at the cut face that way you can see that this little recess here will be gone we won't be able to see that anymore so that means that this inner uh, section here can go obviously if we cut along this line and we get to this point where we're cutting through these holes that go through the uh, middle of the uh, object that will just be clear space so that will remain unhatched okay when we get across to this point what we're going to find is that this section at the bottom uh, will be cutting through metal so that will be hatched but this web 
we do not hatch. Even though we're cutting through that, even though the hacksaw blade would touch that and effectively leave uh, sort of a mark along there as it cuts, this area here, which it corresponds to, does not get hatched. And that's because we don't hatch thin webs on section views. Uh, and that really is down to the fact that if we were to do that, it would create a false sense of solidity uh, with this web, whereas in actual fact it's only very, very thin. So thin webs do not get hatched. That's quite an important point and something to watch out for uh, on assessments. So what we'll do now is we will uh, hatch this area here, and it's going to include this area here as well. So what we'll do is we'll go to our hatch command, which is here. If we drop down the arrow next to it, you can see we've got hatch, gradient, and boundary. We're going to use the hatch tool, and this immediately brings up this additional uh, tab now on the ribbon. So what we want to do is look for the particular uh, hatching that we're going to use. Uh, and C31 is, is a standard one that most people uh, will use for hatching in this instance. So we select that, and then all we do is we find the area that we want to hatch. Now you can see obviously we're not going to hatch the circle, but if you move your arrow over the circle, it fills it in there. If you pop it there, it fills it in there. Uh, if you, uh, we, could, we could fill in any one of these like this. Yep. So that's all, we can hatch anything that we want to hatch. Yep, like that. even on the isometric drawing we'll be able to do some some hatching in, uh, in different places. So this area here, we want to hatch because we would cut through that with our hacksaw if we were to cut along that line we've marked AA. But this webbed area, uh, this area here which is the web, we would not hatch that. Okay, so we would leave that unhatched. So if we hit uh, close hatch creation, you can see now that hatched area has been created, okay, so that's been completed. So that looks pretty good. So that is just a very brief introduction in how to carry out uh, section views and hatching. Uh, there's more to this uh, than what we've shown here, but obviously uh, more detail will be shown in later videos. So I hope this has been helpful, uh, and uh, as always, if you have any comments or suggestions for things you'd like to see in a future video, uh, then please let me know in the comments. Thank you very much. Goodbye.